Hi, Keith here from Academy of Bass. Thanks for joining me. Today I'm going to talk to you about chords and specifically we're going to look at this. I think it's quite pretty. I hope you like it. It's based on a jazz standard called Blue Bossa and the chords are C minor 7 to F minor 7 then we've got D minor 7 flat 5 to G7 and back to C minor 7 then we modulate to E flat minor 7 and then A flat 7 and then it's D flat major 7 and then we're back to D minor 7 flat 5 and G7 and finally C minor 7. So you can see it's quite a straightforward chord progression in that there aren't a lot of chords. You may also have noticed that a lot of the voicings that I'm playing are quite close together so I'm not spreading the voices out across the strings and I'm certainly not playing some of the more common chord shapes that we play on bass like tenths where you've got a root and a third or a root and a flat and third or more open shapes like this or this or even four note clusters that take us across all the strings all of which work great on the bass and really allow the notes to ring out. So I'm playing much tighter clusters of notes. I'm also playing most of the chords on the top three strings too. And whilst my picking hand does move around, for the most part, it's closer to the bridge, again, to help the clarity of the notes. I'm also playing in the style of comping. Comping is what a piano player or a guitarist will do when they play music. So they'll play a chord and then they'll bounce off that chord and play something similar or related, either harmonically or rhythmically. I put this together myself because I like the sound of it. It's based on the chord progression, obviously, and a tune, but it's very much a solo piece. So if you wanted to use it for accompanying purposes, you might need to rework some of the voices. But we'll see, because I'm going to play it with a tune and also with a bass line, so you'll get a chance to hear what it sounds like in context. So let's learn it. So our first chord is C minor seven, and I'm just playing a simple root position triad. So we've got C the root, E flat the flat and third, and G the fifth. And then we move to, which is an E flat major seven shape. So we've got E flat, G, and D. You can also think of that as a C minor nine because D's the ninth of C. And then we're at, which is just an inversion of the C minor triad. So we've got E flat, G, and C. And then we move to F minor seven, and we've got a rootless voicing here. We've got C the fifth, E flat the flat and seventh, and A flat the flat and third. And we answer that with, which is a quartal voicing. Quartal just means that it's stacked in fourths. So on the bass, whenever we play this, we're playing fourths. So we've got D, G, and C, followed by C, F, and B flat. And I'm playing this with my second, third and fourth fingers, but you can play it with your first, second and third if you want. I just prefer to play it with my second, third and fourth. And then we're at D minor seven flat five. And we've got a basic triad here. So it's D the root, F the flat and third, and A flat the flat and fifth. And then we're at G seven. So this is B the third, F the flat and seventh, and G the root. And then we're back to C minor, to our C minor triad. And then I play, which is another quartal shape. So I'm playing B flat, E flat, and A flat. B flat's the flat and seventh, E flat is the flat and third, and A flat is the flat and thirteenth. So it's like a C minor thirteenth. Then I've got a little line, which is not important, but I'm going to show you it anyway. But before I do, I don't know whether you've noticed that, but my picking hand is firmly anchored. It hasn't moved. So my thumb is on the A string. My first finger is playing the D string and my second finger is playing the G string. And right the way throughout, I'm using the same fingerings.
and I'm going to play this line. So I'm playing C with my thumb, E flat with my first finger, G with my second finger, then I'm playing the open D with my first finger and B flat with my thumb. And then we're at E minor 7. And the way I'm picking this is, again, I'm sweeping it with my thumb, first and second finger. So it's an E minor 7, but we've got an A flat, which is the 11th, a D flat, which is the flat and 7th, and a G flat, which is the flat and 3rd. So it's like an E minor 11, and it's rootless again. Then we've got another little line, because I'm playing E flat with my first finger, and I'm pulling off onto the D flat, and then I play the A flat again with my thumb. So I've got... to A flat seven, and this is just a standard seven chord shape. So it's A flat the root, C the third, and G flat the flat and seventh. And then we're at D flat major. And this is just an inversion of the triad. So we've got A flat the fifth, D flat the root, and F the third. And then we play this. So I've added a G flat, so we've now got A flat, D flat, G flat. And that's a sus or a sus four chord or a suspended fourth chord. So we've taken the third from the triad and we've replaced it with a fourth and turned it into a suspended fourth. And then we're back. So we've got D flat, D flat, sus four, back to D flat. And now we're at D minor seven flat five. And this is another rootless voicing. And oh, let's look at the notes. So it's. F, which is the flat and third, C, which is the flat and seventh, and E flat, which is the flat and ninth. And then we're at G7. It's another rootless voicing. So this time we've got A flat, which is the flat and ninth, B, which is the third, and F, which is the flat and seventh. Now if you look at this chord progression where we've got a minor 7 flat 5 to a 7 chord to a minor chord as a 1 chord, so a D minor 7 flat 5 to a G7 to a C minor 7, that's a minor 2 5. And like all dominant 7 chords, uh, the 7 chord is prone to alteration and extending, and the most common alteration in a minor 2 5 is to add a flat 9 to the dominant 7 chord, so we get a G7 flat 9. And then we're back to C minor 7. And I really like this voicing because it's open and it's one of the few voicings that spreads out across the strings. By the way, my thumb is now moved to the E string to accommodate this voicing. And we've got an E flat, the flattened third, then we've got a C, the root, and then a G, the fifth. And then to finish off, we're playing which is a final G7 chord that brings us back to the beginning. So we've got G, the root, D flat, which could be a flattened fifth or a sharpened eleventh, and F, which is a flattened seventh. Now we can look at this another way, because in jazz, when we take a dominant seven chord, it's very common to substitute that chord with another dominant seven chord that's a flattened fifth away. That's called a tritone substitution. So we could also look at this chord as a D flat. So let's look at the notes as if it was a D flat chord. So we've got a G, which is a flattened fifth or a sharpened eleventh, a D flat, which is the root, and an F, which is the third. So depending on which root we choose, it could be a G7 flat 5 or a G7 sharp 11, or a D flat 7 flat 5 or a D flat 7 sharp 11. And we'll get to hear both of those sounds a little bit later when we play through. So for now we've got C minor to F minor 7 and our quartal shape. Then it's D minor 7 flat 5 to G7 back to C minor. Got our line E minor 7 to A flat 7 to D flat major D flat sus and back to D flat major E minor 7 flat 5 flat 9 G7 flat 9 C minor 
and finally it's either our G7 or our D flat 7. So you can see there's quite a lot to work through. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to play it along with the tune just so you can hear what it sounds like in context. Now I'm going to add a bass line and we'll get the chance to hear the difference between the G7 and the D flat 7 at the end of the piece. the G7 coming up. And this is the D flat 7. I'll leave you to decide whether you prefer the G7 at the end of the piece or the D flat 7. So you can hear that it all sounds great together. By the way, I've got a confession to make. Just before I started shooting the video, I was playing around with the chords and I came up with a voicing that I really liked, but I didn't include it in the lesson because I thought I had enough. It's been nagging away at me, so if it's okay, I'd like to show you that. It's in the second section of the song where we modulate and we play E flat minor 7 to A flat 7 and then D flat major. But instead of playing this inversion of a major triad, I'd like to play this. So it's a bit more spread out and I think it sounds quite sweet. So we've got D flat, the root, and F the third, which is our standard 10th shape. But I'm adding this. I'm adding a B flat, which gives us a D flat six chord. So we get D flat six. Then we're going to play our sus four, and then back to our D flat triad. So we get E flat minor seven, A flat seven to D flat six, sus four. You can have endless amounts of fun with this. You can chop and change the voicings to suit yourself, add notes, take them away, do whatever you want, but it's great fun playing around with chords and it will do wonders for improving your knowledge of harmony too. I'm going to have a final playthrough now and I'm going to play all of the ideas that we've been working on in the lesson, but I'm improvising so there might be a few more additions to this too. I hope you enjoy it. And there you have it. I've posted a link below to a workbook for the lesson, so make sure you grab it. I'm currently releasing a new video every week, so keep an eye out for them. Feel free to subscribe or hit the bell notification, that way you won't miss out on anything. Look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks for joining me, and in the meantime, happy practicing. <laughs>